Hold on to your dragons and kiss your nephew. Oh god, I can't believe I just said that. Because after over a year and a half, we have the most thrilling thing to happen to a royal family since Prince Harry introduced the queen to memes. Really? Please. But before we get into the episode, we need to talk about the opening credits, because I believe they offer substantial clues as to how this season will develop. And the best way to do that is to compare these credits with previous seasons. For example, the season 7 opening credits predominantly featured six locations. King's Landing, Dragonstone, Winterfell, The Wall, Eastwatch, and Old Town. While season 8 only features four. The Wall, Last Hearth, Winterfell, and King's Landing. This leads me to believe, and I think it's quite obvious that Season 8 will focus mainly in the North and in King's Landing. We first see the Wall, which has been updated since its attack by the Night King to show its destruction. As we progress further south in Westeros, the tiles turn blue, signifying the Night King's ever-increasing hold over the region. We then turn to Last Hearth, the northernmost settlement in the North, which is currently run by Ned Umber, the grandson of Great John Umber who fought alongside Robb Stark in Season 2. It's revealed in Season 6 that Great John has passed away, and Ned Umber here takes control of the house. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but it's last heart that Tormund, Beric Dondarrion, and Edison Tollett find abandoned near the end of the episode. It's Ned Umber's corpse they find attached to the wall, surrounded by limbs forming a mysterious White Walker symbol, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video. As Ned awakens as a white, he's quickly burned by Beric. And goddamn, I love that flaming sword. We then continue on to Winterfell, where I believe most of the season will take place. It's been a pretty well-established rumor that a 55-day night shoot in freezing cold temperatures was shot with almost all of the characters being featured in it, and my best guess is that this refers to Winterfell, since all the characters seem to be congregating there. We also get this really interesting signet which shows several of the house animals. On the left we have a lion eating a fish, which could mean a Lannister killing a Tully. The middle a direwolf being hung, meaning a Stark, and on the right a white walker holding a lion head, signifying a Lannister. To me this is the most substantial clue we get from the introductory credits, and I want to hear your thoughts below in the comments. We then get King's Landing, which I think is just there because Cersei's storyline will take place there, and then we get the symbol of House Lannister overlooking the throne. My guess is that's because the current ruler is a Lannister, but look at the shot that follows right after. It's a dragon, signifying Targaryen. Could this mean Daenerys, or perhaps Jon Snow, now knowing that he's a Targaryen, could sit on the throne? I literally could talk for hours just about this intro, but we have a whole episode to get into. By the way, if you're liking the video so far, please give it a like, share, and comment. Now let's get into the real meat of things. We open on a young boy traveling through the outskirts of Winterfell to see the Unsullied arrive. For Winterfell, this is a huge culture shock. Not only have they likely never seen foreigners from the continent of Essos, but there are two giant friggin' dragons which haven't been seen for centuries, especially in the north. Behind the Unsullied, Sullied, you can make out a few Dothraki as well. And damn, girl, look at Danny rocking that white fur coat with shoulder pads. Wait until John finds out that she's his aunt. Awkward! Arya watches on proud. She hasn't seen John since season one. But that's short lived as one of the men on her list to kill, Sander Clegane, aka the Hound, arrives as well. He's followed by Gendry, who we previously believed to be the true heir to the crown, being the son of Robert Baratheon. But since Danny and John are there, he's way down the list. And riding in luxury is our pal Tyrion Lannister, alongside Lord Varys. Behind them is Grey Worm and his lover Missandei. This whole section is a cavalcade of known characters finally converging in one place. The crowd then sees Danny's dragons in a mixture of fear and awe. Then more reunions. Jon sees Bran for the first time since season one. He does not yet know he's turned into the three-eyed raven. Jon says Bran is almost a man, which Bran replies, almost. That line itself says so much. It's not about him being an adult, it's about him almost not being a human. He's in instilled with the powers of the Three-Eyed Raven. Queen Danny is introduced to Sansa, the Lady of Winterfell, who's as stone-cold in meeting her as Winterfell itself. Then Bran has to rain on everyone's parade by cutting through all the bullshit and explaining the current situation. The Night King has taken one of Danny's dragons and has already broken through the wall. We then have Sansa calling on Lord Ned Umber for his troops, who needs more supplies in order to get his men south in time. Remember Ned Umber is the lad who unfortunately finds himself pinned to the walls of Last Hearth. 
We also have fan favorite Leanna Mormont, who's like, WTF, John, are you not our leader now? Like, why is Queen Elsa over here taking over? And honestly, John is quite rational here. They brought dragons and men, even joined with the Lannisters, because if they don't, they're all going to die at the hands of the Night King. Gendry here is preparing wagons of coal, and we'll see later on this coal is needed to forge the dragon glass to supply the army with weapons to take on the army of the dead. And look at this, a husband and wife reunion. Yes, they haven't spoken since Joffrey's wedding in season 4. And Tyrion is pretty cryptic with Sansa, telling her that Cersei, quote, now has something to live for. He's referring, of course, to her baby. But Sansa walks away saying, I used to think you were the cleverest man alive. Perhaps a jab that Cersei may not be pregnant at all, and that Tyrion fell for it. And then look at Bran being such a creeper. And then we get that Arya John reunion we've all been waiting for. She still has the Valerian steel needle that John gave her as a gift all the way back in season one. He's then like, Bitch, you seen this? And pulls out an even bigger blade made out of Valyrian. And judging how this convo goes, it's clear Jon and Arya still love each other. But Arya still isn't sold on him bending the knee to Danny. She doesn't want his love for Danny, clouding the fact that Sansa and her are family. She ends the scene saying, We're family, don't forget that. Back in King's Landing, Kyburn tells Cersei the dead have broken through the wall, and Cersei's like, and then we get our first glimpse at the Gold Company, a group of mercenaries from Essos under the command of Harry Strickland. He's being brought to Westeros using Euron Greyjoy's ships. And below deck we get a loving uncle niece chat with Euron and his captive, Yara. He's not gonna kill her just yet. Back in King's Landing, Cersei is holding a tantrum because the Golden Company hasn't brought the war elephants they're renowned for. Euron, however, has only one thing on his mind. He's become frustrated he's done so much and has gotten nothing in return, and he's suffering from tremendous blue balls. Well, it's a blue ball! Someone should introduce him to Ramsay Bolton. Then Cersei's like, alright, pity f Speaking of f***ing, Bronn seems to be having a terrible time. And look at this walker. You just got Kyburned. Seems Cersei wants a word with our man. She wants Bronn to kill Tyrion and Jaime in the event the armies defeat the White Walkers. Not only that, she wants to kill them with a crossbow, the same weapon Tyrion used to kill their father, Tywin. My guess is that Bronn will not go through with killing Jaime or Tyrion. One, he's already established friendships with both of them, and two, his character arc would work out so much better if he didn't do it. For the entire series, Bronn has been nothing but women and money, putting himself before all others. To see him change and for once choose somebody else over himself would be a great turn for his character, and I think overall satisfying for GOT fans. Then again, Game of Thrones is known for throwing everything on its head. And Cersei just got the D, but can't stop thinking about elephants. Euron also does this weird belly rub saying he's going to put a prince in her belly. Apparently she hasn't told him there's a bun in the oven, unless of course that's a lie. And look who it is, Theon Greyjoy saves his sister and... <laughs> Okay, maybe not the welcome you were anticipating, but he did abandon her and jump ship last season. Yara tells Theon that with Euron's men in King's Landing, they can reclaim the Iron Islands. After all, if the defense of the North fails, Danny will need some place to retreat to, some place the dead can't go. But Theon in his heart wants to go to Winterfell. He wants to redeem all the wrongdoings he has done, and this may mean he may die doing so. That may be the only way he can fully right his wrongs. And Davos has a quaint talk with Tyrion about the Men of the North, how Danny, the Dothraki, and Unsullied will need to prove themselves to gain their trust. And he proposes that the Seven Kingdoms, should they survive the incoming invasion, be ruled by a just woman and an honorable man, both Danny and Jon on the throne. But it's Varys who has the last line here, that nothing lasts, as we look upon Danny and Jon looking lovingly at each other perhaps foreshadowing that one of them won't make it till the end of the season. And Danny is all emo because Sansa doesn't like her. She's the queen and wants some damn respect. All I'm saying is that my nerves are bad, I've been on medication and everything, and I just want some respect. The Dothraki arrive and Danny is concerned the dragons are barely eating. But hey, they're strong enough to go on a magical dragon riding date. I can show you the world. And they share a hot, passionate kiss in front of a waterfall with these two perverts watching. Especially this one. Gendry is busy making blades out of dragon glass for the Hound, who has a sweet new axe. And the loving reunions continue with Arya and Clegane. You're a cold little bitch, aren't you? Arya also meets up with Gendry, who she last saw in season 2. She hands him a special design for a blade made of dragon glass, and this is super important. Notice how the tip can come apart from the hilt. We'll definitely be seeing this in action. 
And was it just me, or was there a little thing going on between these two? Ooh la la. And John is getting more shit from Sansa that he bent the knee. When will these people understand there's a friggin' army of the dead on their doorstep? You wanna worry about who holds what title, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. And that's all that really matters at the end of the day. And Sansa goes in for the kill here. Did you bend the knee to save the North? Or because you love her? Damn. <laughs> Danny and Captain Friendzone over here thanks Sam for healing Jorah and offers him a reward. He just wants a pardon for borrowing some books. Nerd! Oh yeah, he also stole a Valyrian sword from his father who... Oh, this is awkward. She killed his dad and brother. And as Sam goes to get some fresh air, Bran is doing his creepy watching again. He's apparently waiting for an old friend. My guess is that he's actually referring to Jaime Lannister, of whom he shares another creepy stare-off later on in the episode. It was Jaime, if you'll remember, who threw him off the tower after he caught him having naughty time with his sister. Either way, he tells Sam it's time for him to tell Jon about his real heritage. In the crypts below Winterfell, where the dead of House Stark lay, Sam and Jon reunite. And cats out of the bag, Sam tells Jon he's the son of Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark, making him the rightful heir to the throne. His real name is Aegon Targaryen. If you want to know more about the family tree and how this all works out, I'm putting a link in the description to a video by Useful Charts which maps it all out. And here we are at Last Hearth, the place we saw in the introductory credits and where Ned Umber said he couldn't get his men to Winterfell in time. Well, it looks like they met a pretty gruesome fate as the Night King and his men have already arrived. Here, Tormund, Beric Dondarrion, and Edison Tullet uncover the body of Ned Umber, which Beric says is a message from the Night King. Tormund says they need to get to Winterfell ASAP, and my guess is that they will, or just as the fight is ending, in time to save some of our heroes in their time of need. Now it may just be me, but the formation here looks a lot like the sigil for House Targaryen. But beyond that, who knows what the real message the Night King is trying to say. But if the rumors are true that the Night King and House Targaryen are somehow related, this could be some crazy foreshadowing. And look who it is, our favorite one-armed sister lover, and he's pretty shocked to see Bran. My guess is in future episodes, these two will talk. The Three-Eyed Raven sees all, and with Bronn potentially coming to kill him, and who knows what his sister is up to, Bran will surely come in handy. That's it for this episode, guys. I literally have no idea how this video will do since I'm up against a thousand other Game of Thrones videos, so every like, comment, and share is such a huge help to me. I'm hoping to break down every episode and hope you'll watch with me along the way. If you want to ask me any questions, you can reach me on Twitter at ThinkStoryYT. Winter is finally here, so remember, Daddy loves you very much.